Hello everyone, and my name's Bob Mitch. Welcome back to some Star Citizen. So we are in the 3.6 PTU. Wave one has hit, so now the uh, first wave, so concierge and subscribers can jump into the PTU. And as you can see, it's looking very pretty. So they have enabled some more of the terrain features, like extra grass and things like that on Hurst, and they've spread out the flora a bit to make it look a bit more sort of populated with more flora and fauna, shall we say? So the main reason I wanted to do this video for you, aside from showing you some beautiful grass whilst we walk through some lovely wheat fields, is that they have now put some additional really cool new features in, some of which I have had a play with, some of which I haven't, and I just wanted to do a quick video on what we have so far. So. My lovely lady here is going to get back in the Constellation Akita. I don't seem to have the ships that I actually own on the PTU. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's something that I need to sort out by recopying my account. However, so we're on Hurston and I have landed and I've already gone through the, uh, the rigmarole of getting here. There is also channels now. I don't know if it will update when I go back in, but when you get inside your ship here, you can see, there we go. Commerce Channel joined, RSI Constellation Aquila, Bob Mitch. So it tells you the ship and the player who owns it. So now when you're inside a ship, you can use a VoIP channel that is exclusive to the ship. So you can either be part of a group or you can be part of a ship chat. How cool is that? So they've updated that now. Apparently it's not working properly, like it's not fully implemented yet, but uh, I haven't tried it in a group. I've only done some solo play. So if I go outside of my Aquila here, you will now see that we can see the Constellation's lovely little turbo fan assemblies underneath here. You see those? So those previous flaps that we had that have always been shut are now open. You can see there's two to the rear there, just by the, uh, the rear legs, the landing legs. And what will happen is when I turn the engine on, when I do turn the engine on, okay, you'll hear these things fire up. So. Now we're in VTOL mode, and VTOL mode will engage so long as you are in like an atmospheric body, so Hurston, Arc Corp, I would even say Gamar, Yela, you know, anywhere that's got an atmosphere that it can use it, although I have seen it in vacuum as well, I don't know how much difference of a, an effect that makes. So, I will hold space to take off. And you can see my ship is swaying a little bit, and that's because I was off centre. Now, I'm going to move this perfectly to centre, and I'm going to press Z. So my translation has stopped. So the movement forward and backward is called translation like this, if you didn't already know. Now if I press S, I will go backwards. But you can see I drift a lot more now. It doesn't automatically come to a stop. And conversely, if I press W, I will go forward. But again, it doesn't go to a stop. You have drift because your ship is now in VTOL landing mode, or takeoff mode if you like. So I'll now press Z so that I have control. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to roll to the to the right, you can see I roll to the right. I'm going to stabilise that by going to the left, and I pitch to the left. You can see the ship tries to stabilise itself. I'm going to get a bit more height, just to be a bit safer and not clip the uh, shelter. I'm going to pitch the nose forward, and you can see that the ship starts to move forward. But it tries to do its best to maintain the current altitude. You can see that I'm not losing altitude. And if I pitch upwards, you'll see that the ship slows down and then starts to go back. It's almost like a helicopter in that kind of sense, in that respect. So you can use these different things, of the different axis of movement to your advantage and do some very cool um, like rocking horse manoeuvre, take off and landing manoeuvres if you're very good with that. So the Connie is very twitchy doing this. Um, but I imagine some of the smaller ships, I haven't flown any of the smaller ships yet, I've just been having fun with the Connie um, I imagine they will be kind of the same, if not a bit more squirrely, so I'll have to have a go with those later on tomorrow. So I haven't really been able to play that much, but I wanted to do this quick thing because I think this is very cool. What's more interesting is that I will just get a bit more height again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch down so that the ship starts to move forward, and you can see it kind of hits a limiter. So I am holding right down now, and it won't let me go nose first into the floor. You see that? If it's still maintaining the same kind of altitude. Now if I let go, or press Z, you see it's slowly rising. And if I put up like this, you can see the translation moves 
and it slows me right down again. So it's kind of designed to make you not lose control of your ship, which I think is really, really neat. So what I'm going to do now is you can see that if I'm holding W, it's only letting me go a little bit. I haven't raised my landing gear yet, so we'll do that now. And I'll take control of the ship again, and you can see that it still only lets me move at a certain pace. I'm going to raise my thing now, and we're still in VTOL. So I'm accelerating, still accelerating. VTOL flaps are still open. And you'll see that once you get to a certain speed, to a certain threshold, the VTOL flaps will close, and your ship will basically let aerodynamics take over and let aerodynamics do its thing so your ship will try and generate lift. Of course the Constellation isn't all that aerodynamic, it's very brick-like so you can see it's vibrating a bit in the atmosphere. Now what else is cool is if I go outside again and I press Z to turn my thrusters off you can see that the VTOL instantly engages and takes back over so that you don't just plummet down to the planet's surface anymore. So instead of kind of just floating and hovering, lots of the ships have a VTOL mode now and it kind of shows it, which is very, very cool. There is also things in this patch like uh, misfires, um, your weapons and your ship parts now degrade over time, so that there's lots and lots and lots of neat things in this patch. But I just wanted to show off the VTOL because I thought that was very, very special. So for one last little treat, I think we'll head to one of the new rest stops and go and have a look at one of those. Okay, so we're coming up to one of the revamp rest stops now, and it's kind of being obscured by the sunlight, which makes this an even more epic intro, even though I'm not really trying that hard. So the new rest stops that they put in, you can just start to maybe see it there. It might be a bit dark in the video. I can just about see it. But basically, they have changed them to be absolutely huge discs. If anything, they look like the um, the Trade Federation ships from the Phantom Menace, you know, the giant uh, ships that they use the blockade uh, Naboo with. So you can just see it peeking in here. When we go past, I'm just going to turn off my thrusters and we'll spin around to have a look. So here we go. They are absolutely massive flying discs and there's a very good reason they've done this. So you can see outside there, if I can slow my constellation down because it's got a mind of its own. There we go. I overheated my engines trying to stop. Things are noisy now. As I was saying, so you can see that they've put these hangars now on the outside. So, what this means is that ships like the Constellation, the Hammerhead, and whatever can dock on the outside. You just start to see and get a scale of how big this thing is. Now I'm getting closer to it. And then we will have things like the Orion, um, the Reclaimer, you know, the capital ships, those kinds of really hardcore jobbies that essentially can't land on planets will be able to dock on these gigantic boom arms here. So that's what these are for. So I think that's very, very cool. You can see we've got some more of the big landing pads down there. And I just love the scale of these things. They are like legitimate cities in space. They're almost like the, um, the very top of the... Um, Star bases from Star Trek, like they had a very large upper ring, didn't they? So yeah, it's everything. Everything about this patch is just looking really, really good. Even though there's still quite a few things that they need to fix and quite a few bits and bobs that they need to implement. So with the uh, Trade Federation space station here, I shall leave this video at this, and I shall bring you another video tomorrow when I've had a bit more time to play. We have the new variants, well not the new variants, rather the uh, the revamped Aegis Vanguard to go and have a look at, so we'll definitely go and have a look at one of those. And there's lots of different things like the uh, new crime system, there's a new justice system, there is new missions for smuggling, so there's illegal missions that you can do now, although some of the NPCs aren't working at the minute, so if they do give like illegal variant mission options like Wallace Klim, then uh, at the moment they are quite working. 
So yeah, lots of things to cover and lots of things to look forward to. So with that, I will see you all next time. Enjoy.